This video on breast is for educational purpose only. Created by Dr. Sachin Malandur. MySeda.com holds the copyright for this video. This video covers introduction to the breast, location of the breast, anatomical relation, lactiferous glands and ducts, suspensory ligament, blood supply and drainage, lymphatics which is clinically important. Let's start with introduction to the breast. It is a modified sweat gland which is present in both the sex. In females, the breast is a part of reproductive system and capable of producing milk after delivery, that is during lactation period. The breast milk is the main source of nutrient to the newborn. In males, the breast is rudimentary. The breast in males is of similar structure as that of immature females. At puberty in females, under the influence of ovarian hormone, glands enlarge and the breast becomes hemispherical in shape. The contour and the size of the breast are mainly produced by subcutaneous fat, except during pregnancy when the mammary gland enlarges and new glandular tissue forms. The shape and size of the breast changes with age. In young women, the breast protrudes forward from a circular base. In older women, the breast is pendulous and maximum size reached during lactation. The size and the shape of the breast mainly depends on the gene, race and the dietary factor. Of course, the size can be increased or decreased by plastic surgeries. Now we will study location and extent of the breast. For practical reason, the breast in mature female is explained. The base of the breast extends vertically from the second rib to the sixth rib and transversely from lateral margin of the sternum to the mid-axillary line. It is present in superficial fascia. Two-thirds of the breast rests on the pectoral fascia, that is, the fascia overlying the pectoral major muscle. One third rests on the fascia covering the serratus anterior muscle. A small part of breast extends along the inferior lateral border of the pectoris major towards the axilla, forming an axillary tail. The axillary tail may enlarge during menstrual cycle and may be mistaken for a lump or a enlarged lymph nodes. Now we will study the structure of the breast. A small nipple is surrounded by a circular pigmented area of skin called areola at the level of fourth intercostal space in young female and males. The position of the nipple varies in females. What I mean is female with bigger breast the position of the nipple is little bit lower down. The tiny tubercle on areola produced by underlining sebaceous gland enlarges during pregnancy and secrete an oily substance that provides lubricant for areola and the nipple. The breast tissue consists of system of ducts that we call it as lactiferous ducts embedded in connective tissue that does not extend beyond the margin of the areola. Each adult female breast consists around 15 to 20 lobules which radiate out of the nipple. The lactiferous duct from each lobe opens separately on the summit of nipple and possess a dilated portion. This dilated portion we call it as lactiferous sinus or ampulla. Each lobe is a cluster of alveoli and drained by lactiferous duct. Suspensory ligament. This is the ligament which anchors the skin and the gland to the deep fascia. When I say deep fascia, that is the fascia of the pectoral muscle, that we call it as pectoralis fascia. Suspensory ligament is well developed in superior part of the breast. The breast is separated from pectoral fascia by loose connecting tissue plane. This plane we call it as retromammillary space. This retromammillary space allows the breast to some degree to move on the pectoral fascia. Now coming to the blood supply 
of the breast. First, we will study the arterial blood supply. Internal thoracic artery through medial mammillary branches and anterior intercostal branches supplies the breast on the medial side. Thoracic aorta supplies through second, third and fourth posterior intercostal arteries. Now, the last artery that is the axillary artery supplies the breast through lateral thoracic artery and thoracoacromial artery. These are the three arteries which supplies the breast through their branches. Venous drainage corresponds to the arteries. Always veins corresponds to the arteries. Venous drainage is mainly to axillary veins. Lymphatic drainage very important. The lymphatic drainage of the breast is clinically important because of frequent development of cancer in the gland and subsequent metastasis of malignant cell along lymph vessels to the lymph nodes, opposite breast and even the distant organs. For practical purpose, we can divide the breast into four quadrant, that is medial upper and lower quadrant, lateral upper and lower quadrant. The lateral upper and lower quadrant will drain into the axillary lymph nodes initially to the pectoral lymph node that is anterior pectoral lymph node from there it spreads to all other axillary lymph nodes medial upper quadrant internal thoracic group of lymph nodes will drain from the medial upper quadrant medial lower quadrant drains to the opposite breast and inferior phrenic lymph nodes now supply the now supplied to the breast is by anterior and lateral cutaneous branch of 4th to 6th intercostal nerves. The important point to be remembered is now do not control the secretion of milk. The secretion of the milk is controlled by the hormone called prolactin. 